Hello all, welcome to Truth Seekers. In this video, I will give you a deeper insight on the true origins of aliens. You'll be surprised at the lies we've all been told for so many years. Wow. Here we go again. I mean, this is Truth Show and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is Truth Show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Okay, I know most of us are to believe that these aliens are big head, bubble eyed, gray haired creatures. Heck, they went far as to stage crashing scenes with fake dummies and actors to reveal what they allegedly saw. But what we need to do is take a closer look at what they really saw. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of light of lightning. Why do you think the slaves said, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home? You ain't talking about a slave ship. Slave ships float. But if you're asking something to swing low, it has to be flying high. So 3,000 years ago, located 700 miles south of Cairo and the Giza Plateau, at a place called Abydos, there's written on the ceiling beams of the New Kingdom Temple, carved in stone images of flying contraptions. Y'all can't see them from there, but you get the DVD and we'll zoom in on the point. Here you see. Flight the, the bugs and uh, and Neil were on. Uh, but anyway, there is one image there that shows black people getting off. So people with dark skin getting off. Not dark, black. Black skin. Really black. Yeah. Were they tall? Yes. Very tall? Yeah. How tall? Do you know? Well, they got out the, uh, the doorway. I don't know how high that is, but... Well, what... Uh, say, say, seven, seven feet would be probably a conservative estimate. Um, Have you heard about Clark McClellan's uh, statement about that? No. Oh, yeah? Close encounter of the fifth kind is when you reach out and try to communicate with extraterrestrials. The government doesn't want you to do this. There's actually an FBI file on me because I'm contacting extraterrestrials and talking to them, a race of beings, hundreds of millions of years ahead of us. It can go from a light body to a 3D body. It can phase in, phase out, and travel through time and space and they're very conscious beings. One of the most advanced, they too were once us. You see, back in the ancient times, in the time of queens and kings, pharaohs and such, they used to mold themselves like the gods and goddesses with their elongated skulls. These beings are not aliens. They are the gods and goddesses who have been recorded to have flown in and out of the underworld for centuries. As many of you may have saw in hieroglyphics and also in some famous paintings. The flying machines that we're using now, they used that thousands of years ago. Oh, and believe it or not, they also had Wi-Fi, hence the pyramid that was used for that. It has been studied thanks to plagiarized invention from the late great Nikola Tesla. Yes, he used to study the ancient teachings of ancient Egyptians. In his study, that's all you saw. Right along with many magicians and so on. Take a look at this. The generation of electricity requires the pyramid to vibrate always. Hence the location in which the electromagnetic waves are more on the surface of the globe are chosen to be the perfect sites for the pyramid. 
For example, the Pyramid of Giza is standing on the underwater currents of the river now, plus on a location where high electromagnetic flux lines can be measured and felt. This provides the vibrations required for the crystals to vibrate at all times. And graphite rods are connected to the floors made of diamagnetic granites. The structure and design of the pyramids emphasized its electrical nature even more. The outer casing of the pyramid was covered with white tufa limestone. The white tufa limestone does not contain magnesium and has high insulating properties. This insulation property and prevented the electricity inside the pyramid from being released without control. Also, the chambers and the passages connecting them are made of granite, which is a good electrical conductor, slightly radioactive, and is formed of about 55% of quartz crystals. Quartz crystals are known for stimulating electrons to flow when they are magnetically vibrated or stressed. Piezoelectric effect. As far back as documented early history, the Great Pyramids has been missing its capstones. These finishing pieces are purported to have been coated in gold, but no one is able to figure out why they have been missing for so long. The ancient Egyptians surely would not have completed their beautiful monstrosities, especially when it involved the capabilities of transmitting energy. The electromagnetic field that is formed at the bottom is actually negative ions of atmospheric air that are transmitted to the upper layers of the pyramid. This facilitates a conductive path of negative ions to the outer areas of the tip. To enhance the ionic content at the tip, gold or copper capstone is fitted so that the ions try to reach the surroundings and ionosphere. The Cheops Pyramid has its own electric capacity ability to accumulate a certain amount of electric charge. If too much electric charge is brought to the Cheops Pyramid, the excess of these charges discharges at the top of the pyramid. But I feel we need to dig deeper. For example, ancient aliens who casually travels to 
you know, the African part of the world that has the roots of anything black. You see, it was the Africans and certain tribes that used to go around teaching various parts of the world hygiene and the use of incense. Sounds familiar, don't it? Arabs and um, Persians are now known as that, but they weren't that before. Yes, that trade, race, and so on was taken over by the people who are claiming it now as their own. Anyway, getting back to the point of the idea of ancient aliens building the pyramids began and why some academics think racism lies at the heart of many extraterrestrial theories. Despite the fact that you can find many scriptures in the Bible about it, for example, it says in Exodus twenty-two twenty-one, 21, do not mistreat an alien or oppress him for you were aliens in Egypt. Then in Exodus 23, 9, you should not oppress an alien for you know the heart of an alien seeing you were aliens in the land of Egypt. Then it's in Leviticus 19, 34. When an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The stranger who lives as a foreigner with you shall be to you as the native born among you and you shall love him as yourself. For you live as foreigners in the land of Egypt. I am Yehu, your God. And then in Leviticus 25:23, the land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and live as foreigners with me. So that means that these entities were different, but they were that much different. They weren't that much different than like everyone else there. They were just descendants of gods and goddesses walking on earth among the living as the people were once before. Hence when he said like you were aliens of the land, his land. This can be explained in the hieroglyphics. But let's move along here. At the ancient site of Hatnip, a quarry in the eastern Egyptian desert, not far from Pham, Archaeologists have recently discovered a sled ramp system used to transport alabaster blocks. Post holes and a ramp with stairs on either side indicate that the contraption allowed Egyptian builders to move heavy blocks up and down the steep slopes. Inscriptions have now helped archaeologists from the University of Liverpool to date this groundbreaking technology to at least the reign of Kung Fu, who ruled from 2589 to 2566 BC. Khufu is known as the pharaoh who likely commissioned the building of the Great Pyramid in Giza. Yes, not aliens. Discovery and reconstruction of the ramp allows us to better understand the ancient construction techniques. It also chips away at the long held but fringe theory that blocks were so heavy and the distances that would have to travel so lengthily that aliens must have built the pyramids. You all know of that ridiculous theory. You gotta know about that. Where did the theory of aliens building the pyramids actually come from? Since the late 19th century, science fiction writers have imagined Martians and the other life forms engaged in great feats of terrestrial engineering. Earlier alien theories surrounding Atlantis may have spawned fantasies about alien building. The most substantial evidence for non-earthly creature arrived in the wake of H.G. Wells' success, capitalizing on the forever surrounding Wells' The War of the Worlds. Astronomer and science fiction writer Garrett P. Service penned a sequel titled Edison Conquest of Mars in 1898. Service posted it that Giants of Mars had moved large blocks and built the Great Pyramid. He even noted that the Sphinx and Martian features, Edison Conquest, was part of a number of science fiction works publishing as books or serialized in newspapers in the late 19th century, which imagined alien invasions fought off by the great inventors of the time. Thomas Edison was a favorite hero in these science fiction fantasies, much later collectively called Edensates, is any of this coming back to you? Okay, let me move forward because it gets crazier. You see, the popularization of the theory of aliens architects has having a basis in science rather than consisting of only fictional music can attribute to Swiss author Erich von Dedeken's 1968 publication of the book Chariots of the Gods, Unsolved Mysteries of the Past. Originally published in German and subsequently translated into English, it was one of the first 
popular sold books to suggest that extraterrestrial life forms, not humans, built structures associated with our ancient civilizations. In 1966, Carl Sagan and Lossif Esch had already speculated that contact with extraterrestrials might have occurred in their book Intelligent Life in the Universe. But Von Dedekinds took this theory to a whole new freaking level. And this year marks the 50th anniversary of that book publication with over 65 million books to date. Yes, while its ideas might be laughable to most, the creation of doubt is, is a pernicious and rhetorical agent. The questioning of human building projects and chariots of the gods remains a bedrock for many within the field of pseudo-archaeology. Far from innocuous, these aliens' theories undermine the agency archaeology and intelligence of non-European cultures in Africa and South America, as well as the native peoples in North America by erasing their achievements. Oh, I'm not done yet. A potent combination of tabloids and television helped to make Von Dedekind's book a bestseller in the United States. Historian of pseudoscience John Calivero has remarked that while the book became a bestseller in Europe, it was the National Enquirer's underscoring of Von Dedekind's work through a series uh, published in the tabloid that introduced its readers in the U.S. in 1970. Three years later, NBC aired an adaption of the book retitled In Search of Ancient Astronauts, featuring a cast of all white men. Oh, yes. Which translated and visualized pseudo theories of archaeology and science for broad popular consumption. Oh, yes. It is notable that many, though not all, extraterrestrial theories focus on archaeological structures at sites within Egypt and Africa, South America, and North America, and so on and so forth. Yeah, in fact, that has led some academics to see beliefs in ancient aliens engineers as a stalking horse for racism. In piece for the online journal conversation, rather frankly titled Racism is Beyond Outlandish Theories About Africa's Ancient Architecture, Julian Benoit, a postdoctoral researcher in the vertebrate of paleontology at the University of the Witwatersrand, South Africa, addressed the continued harm of these theories. First, these people tried to pool their theories by traveling to the world and desecrating ancient artifacts. By changing the color of their faces and placing old wigs on their heads to prove their false story of the mummy's origins. Secondly, they perpetrate and give air to the racist notion that only Europeans, white people, ever were and ever will be capable of such architectural feats. But do note that the original Europeans weren't white, they were black, yes, a dark colored, with wool hair and so on. Hence why many DNA tests from blacks show one of many of their origins to be European. You see, this belief can indeed lead to action. In 2014, German pseudoscientists and hobbyists defaced a cartouche of Khufu inside the Great Pyramid in their misguided search to prove the alien theories. Oh yeah, the Pyramids of Giza and the Great Zimbabwe site are commonly cited by pseudo-archaeologists as structures built by extraterrestrial beings, along with the Moi heads, on the tiny Easter island off the coast of Chile. Sounds familiar? Guess what? I'm still not done yet. Stonehenge, in the English countryside of Wiltshire, is one of the few structures built by European ancestors placed in the category structure allegedly built by aliens. Though the original printing of the Chariots of the Gods, Von Dannekins does not discuss the site any more than it says its massive stone blocks were from Wales and Marlboro. The disproportion of speculation surrounding the non-European versus European structures is, is noticeable, as medieval historian Chris Rido noted. That's what the ancient alien theory does. It discredits the origins of civilizations and almost entirely of non-white civilizations. People may suggest Stonehenge was built by aliens, but do they suggest the Roman form of Parthian were? No. 
You see where I'm going with this? You see, we must question what is at stake in these cases. Why the British are not in danger of having their overall intellect or capability as a culture questioned. Many non-European cultures are historically more vulnerable to such questioning, considering the real race isn't their actual race. They stole that race from the black tribe that was originally there and claimed it as their own, like many of the tribes there. If we look to Von Deniken's work, there can be little doubt that his racial beliefs influence his extraterrestrial theories. After a short stint in jail for fraud and either writing or appropriating the material for a number of other books that develop his ancient astronaut theory, Von Deniken published Signs of the Gods in 1979. Is it here that many of his racial views are most boldly stated? British archaeology officer Keith Fitzpatrick Matthews points out in his bad archaeology blog just a few of many racist questions and statements posed by the author. Was the black race a failure and did the extraterrestrials change the genetic code by gene surgery and then program a white or yellow race? Yes, that's what he said. He also printed beliefs about the innate talents of certain races. Nearly all Negroes are musical. They have rhythm in their blood. Oh yeah. Von Daniken also consistently uses the term Negroid race in comparison with Caucasians. Yeah, this is where all of this alien talk came from. If you haven't kept up, this is their ploy to erase the African slash black roots of the achievements of blacks all over the world because they can't replicate or manufacture what blacks created. So what does it mean to deny a non restrain civilization their accomplishments? As Evesto Benera, a lecturer in the Department of Political Sciences at the University of South Africa, has noted these restrain denialists prefer to revoke agency a skill and from ancient Egyptians or the Shana people of the Bantu civilization rather than recognize their intellectual ownership of these structures. In a chapter addressing colonism, the theft of history and the quest for justice for Africa, Dr. Benira remarked, Western denialists would rather attribute to the great Zimbabwe, to aliens who do not exist, than attribute them to the Shana people and the Africans who exist and who built them? The denial of the Shana people of their intellectual ownership, among others, of the great Zimbabwe ruins is theft of history. And while many other consider theories of ancient aliens to be outlandish and ultimately harmless belief or meme, Banera points out that there is an extant spectrum of Russian denialism whose occupants seek to rescind and relocate great accomplishments from African civilizations in particular. This is why that show is constantly getting renewed and is on air. Its place is to continue to rewrite history and brainwash the masses. To Benira, one example of Western denialism lies in the writings of historian Neil Ferguson. Benira notes that Ferguson underscores the colonial gifts of parliamentary democracy and the English language to countries that they colonized in his book, Empire, How Britain Made the Modern World, like Von Dedekind's Ferguson views, have been disseminated by television shows. A six-part series also called Empire, How Britain Made the Modern World aired on Channel 4 to hype the book's release, arguing that aliens brought magnificent structures to many African civilizations, erases accomplishments, but so does arguing that colonizers brought gifts rather than impose obligations upon the nations that colonized. Colonization coded as the gift of civilization remains an enriched defense of colonism. In recent years, academics have increasingly caught foul on alien theories as culture erases outside of Africa as well. A year ago, Christopher Haney, a professor of Latin America history uh, at the Pennsylvania State University, wrote an article addressing the racism behind the notions that pre-Columbian bodies were evidence for extraterrestrial life. Others have sought to spell the racist theories surrounding native mound buildings, cultures. Yes, we're waking up and breaking down the walls and deception for many years. 
I mean, they're getting so lazy and deep rares and comments to hyper allergic Morag Cursor and archaeologists at DePaul University noted the connection between ancient aliens and the idea that an ancient and superior race had originally built mounds like those of Colloquia in southern Illinois. The myth supported racist policies and has done lasting damage. It is an extension of the 19th century myth of the mound builder. No way could the North American mounds and artifacts have been built by people of the First Nations. It had to be an alien, not local race. Oh yeah. Rather than set up a white supremacy model, which may have not been as popular, Von Dadekin takes the alien father to aliens from out of space. Oh yeah. Kersel noted that the use of pseudoscience revoking the accomplishments of Native American cultures is a sad part of American history. Journalist Alexander Zachik, I may have mispronounced his name, pointed out in an article for the Southern Poverty Law Center that there was widespread popularity and belief in the lost race of the Mount Builders. In 19th century America, it was used by Andrew Jackson and others to undermine the intellect and abilities of Native peoples as we remove them from their native lands. You all remember them, right? They were here before too. You see, there is an underlying ethnic bias against people of color and that many white people don't even recognize when the magnificent achievements of the ancient world are attributed to aliens instead to their rightful creators. The ancestors of modern Egyptian, Iraqis, Guatemalans, Peruvians, etc. This is not to say that the belief in ancient aliens theory makes one racist. However, attributing the achievements of the forerunners of darker skinned peoples to aliens because you believe they couldn't have possibly done it themselves might be perceived as racist to the people of color who descend from these ancient innovators. So when you see flying machines or rear things in the sky and so on, these aren't extraterrestrial beings or whatever they want you to believe or put into your heads to make us believe that we didn't have history and everything that's angelic or powerful and smart came from them. The braids, the gold, and our natural attraction to be gaudy with our gold and jewels, the world would have us believe that this way of representation is tacky. Just like black's hair and nails and so on but little do any of us know it's in our nature to be this artistic no one said anything about the queen of england ran all of those stolen blood diamonds tackily draped all over her so why are we told this is ghetto or tacky with that said remember the aliens are not what the government say they are they are the creators of the world who are also known as gods and goddesses i speak of them in many videos Aside for the goddess Isis, god Horus, Osiris, and so on, there were many beings before them, but there is an older tribe that also explains some sightings. I talk about this in the video I did about Beyonce and Jay-Z, music video slash movie Black is King. You can find it on my Patreon, or you can find it on here, actually. Just like the true race of many characters in the Bible, they were black slash colored or African accessory. Hence why they're trying so hard to kill off many blacks so they can rewrite history in favor of white supremacy. I can go on and on, but I think you all get the picture. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post my videos. Love you all. See you all later. Bye.